Hi there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at um, uh, how I approach, approach, beg your pardon, stretchy chords. Um, and that means sort of manipulating um, sort of the left hand position in order to get chords that, that you really uh, that most people don't think they can get. So what I'm going to talk about is just the way that I approach it, some, some hints and tips uh, in order to achieve these sort of wide stretchy chords. Um, so um, that's exactly what I played at the start of this video. So why don't we get straight into it and I'll show you exactly how I approach it. So uh, what the first thing we need to do here is ascertain the key center. I mean, I ended with a B minor chord, so it is in B minor. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with this chord all the way up here. Okay, and that's chord number four in the key of B, which is E minor. Uh, so that's how I'm thinking of it. Uh, but because we've ascertained the key already, um, uh, these chords are diatonic to the key, so uh, that's what we're going to follow. So it should be, you know, simple enough in terms of working out what the notes are. But we're going to concentrate on the shapes and, and how I approach them and manipulate the left hand position in order to get these stretchy shapes. So this is where we're going to start. 15, 19, then 20 of the G respectively, and we're going to keep these notes on the first, third and second, um, first, second and third strings only. There are other ways to play these chords with open strings, but that's not the point of this particular lesson. It's to try and get you to try some, some bit more outlandish stuff, you know, with, you know, stretches with the left hand. So it's well worth doing. So this is what we're going to do. 15, 19. Okay, the first thing that I want you to, to be aware of here is I've got my thumb about halfway um, on the neck, pretty much a little bit behind the index finger, but what I'm doing is doing the diagonal approach, you know, rather than keeping it straight like that, I'm um, putting my fingers across a sort of diagonal uh, position, okay? And that enables me to, 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 to get those shapes really comfortably and also make sure those no notes are sustaining. We don't want we don't want to cut off notes, okay? Beautiful sound, it's very scalar in nature, that's what it is. Um, but we're playing them as chords and sustaining the notes. Absolutely beautiful sound. So, here's our first, okay? We're going to take these notes here and move it down. But there's a bit of respite here because we, can, we don't have that same stretch with the index finger. Okay, so what I'm doing here is the same thing. Thumb, pretty much the same position, although I'm lifting it up a little bit, keeping my elbow in. Okay, that's, that's comfortable enough, but beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now we get to a bit more of an awkward chord and where I, I change. Um, what I'll do for this chord, uh, I'll adopt a more sort of classical position. Um, my thumb is quite low on the on the uh, the back of the neck here, and I'm also partially barring with the index finger here. Absolutely stunning. Um, so we've got to be really careful of that shift like that. So. The important thing here is when you shift from one position to another, when you go from that diagonal shape to, to that, um, to be really, really comfortable with doing that. So that's the thing that I had to practice more than anything else. Uh, especially being a classical guitar player, you know, we're taught to, to uh, stay in this position the whole time. So, um, uh, you know, this is something I had to work on. So, uh, where were we? We're on this shape here. Oops. Okay, and then we move down to this shape. You'll get familiar with the way that, that the shapes work. But they're absolutely stunning, sound-wise. 
Uh, what was it? <laughs> Got to remember what it is. Okay, now, uh, again, we're in the same position as we played for the previous chord. We're going to shift down to this, but I'm still going to hold the bar. And you can do it across two strings or three strings, you know, sometimes I change it depending on how I feel. Okay. So that's our next shape, and then we're going to take that shape and move it down a whole tone. Okay, now we're getting to pretty awkward territory here. Frets are getting wider, and uh, these stretches are quite challenging, but I'm going to explain how I approach it. Uh, yeah, it's ascending, sorry. Okay, now we've got that shape. Now that's, a, that's pretty demanding, but what I found is that uh, when I hold a bar, I can literally um, play the first note that I need to. This definitely comes from classical guitar playing when you're working out fingerings and stuff. Uh, you don't have to literally, um, you know, place the whole chord at once. Uh, a sensible player will, will use, um, will stay in contact with the strings and use um, a specific finger in order to to reach a stretch. So if I've got my index finger placed, it's a lot easier for me to stretch to that rather than doing it from nothing, is, is what I'm trying to explain to you. So, uh, pretty challenging, but you can do it. You don't need big hands either. I don't have big hands, you know. I've said before in, in videos, I've got quite thick fingers, uh, but I can still get these stretches by uh, manipulating um, using the uh, positioning, you know, pre-preparing. Because we, we have time, you know. We don't have to place the whole chord down at the same time. Okay, so now, right, let me do that again. This one's pretty nasty. So when we go from here, that's quite nasty, but again, we place the little finger, then we can add the other ones afterwards. Okay, now we move down, making sure we're sustaining those notes the whole time. Then we're gonna give yourself a little bit of a break here because it includes an open E string. And then we finish, thank God, on the B chord, <laughs> the B chord. So, um, what I want you to take away from this is that um, there are some chord shapes that are beautiful sounding and very scalar in nature. You know, um, they're very close voicings, you know. Um, and uh, I've been experimenting with, the, with these for a, quite a long time and I absolutely love the sound of them. So I just wanted to kind of share uh, my particular approach to the way that I uh, use um, the left hand and manipulate the left hand in order to get these stretches. You know, so um, like I said before, I've got pretty average hands. So if I've got average hands, I'm pretty sure most of you guys can get these stretches without too much fuss. Just be careful uh, and remember to use, um, like especially with something like that, whoops. Use uh, the purchase that you have with the little finger in, it all, in order to reach it. Okay, so there we have it. That's uh, today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you check out my website. It's still 40% off. It's not going to last too much longer because uh, I'm going to do a Black Friday sale when that comes around. So uh, uh, if you want to support me, that is by far and away the best thing to do. So link is in the description box below. Uh, go and get some lessons. Uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.